or they call me from work to get you from school, you're going back to Sharpell School. Don't you know I sucked it up every day? Don't you know I wiped my tears on the stump of my tree with my sleeve on a daily basis? Because I knew I wasn't going back to Sharpell School. But you know, we know that, that kids can be very cruel. Absolutely. So what was the type of cruelty that you had to experience? Humility, uh, laughing, teasing, humiliation, nan and a boo boo, you don't have this, you don't have that, those type of things. So in your mind, you thought, well, you know, what can I do to fit in? Yeah. And what was the answer to that? Peer pressure, friends, following, anything and anybody. I was 18 years old. So how did you, you know, you're talking about following yes. anything and anybody. Uh, how were you introduced to crack cocaine? I was 18 years old. Mm -hmm. A friend said, Tawana, let's go. We're gonna have fun tonight. We're gonna go to a party. I said, okay. I followed her into the crack house. Smoke everywhere. She put the crack pipe to my mouth. She lit the lighter and said, pull. I did it. And that started an addiction that lasted for how long? 10 years. 10 years addiction. 10 year chaotic addiction. So each time that you would use crack cocaine, you would have a friend to put it to your mouth? In the beginning. Mm -hmm. So what did you do you know, that? After, after I got into it and consumed so bad with it, I put the crack pipe on the table and figured out how to do it myself with my feet. I was that messed up. Yeah. Lord have mercy, Jesus. So what happened that, that eventually got you out of that 10 year addiction? Prayer. Mm -hmm. Because Toby it was prayed. supernatural, wasn't it? Yes, prayer. Toby prayed for me. Grandma Rogers prayed for me. Mm -hmm. On a tent for 10 years, Toby prayed for me. Amen. Grandma Rogers prayed for me. And one day in August of 1991, I'll never forget it, we lay in bed that night and cried. He held me in his arms. And I cried to a God that I didn't even know. And I said, God, if you're real, help me with this addiction or kill me in my sleep. Mm -hmm. I, I was ready. I, I was ready to surrender. And I said, God, you do it. And the next day, it was done. That's it. Come on. Wow. Come on. Frustration that you were going through when you saw her abusing this, and, and what was what was going through your mind? Yes, I remember a whole lot of things. Uh, I was in the Air Force at the time, mm -hmm. and uh, being in the Air Force, you know, you can't hang around people doing crack and doing drugs. And you know, they every time I go back to the base, they would test me and they would go through my car and check my car, make sure, sure drugs wasn't in there. I, and uh, you know, I was like Tawana, you know, you got to quit. She keeps saying she was gonna quit. Her friends will come around again. With the crack again and get her started back and she went to rehab come out of rehab and uh trying to get her life that back together her friends are uh, some of the family members will come around again and get her started again so you know i went to saudi arabia i'll never forget this i gave her money and everything to pay the bills and everything and when i come back uh, none of the bills was paid they came around they spent all the money in crack to pay the bills and i, I told her, i said tomorrow we just can't do this you know we can't do this. And yet you you stuck with her. That's right. Come on. Still praying. It's kinda like it's kinda like God who said, I will never, no, never will I ever leave you nor forsake you. Come on now. Was that the type of commitment that you made to that, that's the commitment. Stick and stay and see it to the end. Stick and stay. Because there, well, there, there will be a change if you stay. So many people give up on their dreams, their hopes, their aspirations, not knowing they're right at the door 
they have the key and the door. They open the door, but they just won't walk into it. Come on, that's when they miss it. They miss it. They no, just won't no, walk into it. Yeah. That's that's the authority of the believer. It's the fact that God supplies the power, but you got to flip the switch. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. And, 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 and uh, sounds to me like you guys spoke to that addiction. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. And you said in the name of Jesus, you stop right now. That's right. That's right. And, and, and immediately, immediately, you were delivered. The next day. The next day. Uh -huh. When I opened my eyes, I felt different. It was. I was like, what is this? That's grace. That's what it is. Come on. Yes. Come on now. I didn't smell it anymore. I didn't want it anymore. I didn't want the friends. I didn't want the. It was just like a metamorphosis. And it's almost like it almost like what did you do to deserve? This? Lord, have mercy. And that's what this grace is yes. all about. Yes. It's, it's Him loving us when we didn't deserve it, yes. delivering us when we yes. didn't deserve it. Yes. What an amazing thing. Yes. And now, you were told that you would never be able to have children. Yes, absolutely. The doctors, mm -hmm. they said, mm -hmm. I, first of all, they said I wouldn't live to be two weeks old. Mm -hmm. yes. I'm 52 years old today. Yes. Come on now. Come on. Come on. Come on. <laughs> I recall a really dark moment mm. in your lives yes. that, you know, I, I really want you to share. We're coming into your world and, you know, hearing you right now and this testimony, it's just so encouraging to a whole lot of people. Yes. But there was a situation that happened yes. that um, it, it really, it, it, it really touched my heart. I'm, I'm grateful to God of who you are today and I'll turn you loose in a moment yes. but could you tell us what happened that dark day when you received the knock on the door um, because in this I think people are going to really see the power of grace I was 18 years old it was in a separate situation in my life my first husband let me be real my first husband and I, we were party animals. Our house was the party house. We smoked, drank, party every night. And on this night, somebody knocked on the door. He opened the door. The guys stormed in the home at gunpoint. They raped me. They held him captive at knife point. They raped me repeatedly, one after the other. It was three guys over and over and over again. They took everything out of my home. They stole everything and I almost lost my mama. But I thank God, I thank God that's the first time it's like, who do you turn to? Where do you go when you've experienced something as traumatizing yes. and as violating yes. as what you've had to go through? Yes. And you can try all the things the world has to offer, yes. and it still leaves you a little damaged. Yeah. Mm. But God. But when God came into your life, <laughs> I'll ask you in, 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 in the interrogative. But when God came in your life, did he take care of that which psychologists couldn't take care of? I got no comments. Did he take care of that with all the professionals in the world, with all of their intellect, could not take care of? Because, I mean, with just this experience here, could have marked your entire life. Absolutely. It could have put you in a ditch that was so low, you could have never gotten out. Absolutely. But excuse me for a moment while I say this. <laughs> My God, 
My God, my God. Reach down in the deepest yes. ditch. Yes. 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 Take you up out of the pit. Yes. Place your feet on a yes. solid ground. Yes. And put a new song in you. Yes. 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 Yes.